Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my video logs. So today I want to talk about the ketogenic diet and this is a very hot topic right now and basically so first off what we should cover is what is actually a ketogenic diet. So ketogenesis refers to typically in nutritional information or literature we talk about like when you fast if you fast long enough after about 18 hours you really start producing a lot of ketones. What happens is that as you fast or you're low, very low carbohydrate, when you eat carbohydrate, carbohydrate is your body's, uh, will be your body's preferred fuel source. Um, but when you eat very low carb, your body will switch to fat, which I'll cover here in a minute. It does not mean more fat loss. <laughs> your body will switch to fat and you will start producing ketones um, as a way to spare blood glucose, okay? because there are some tissues that are obligate glucose users and some are conditional glucose users. So for example, um, your brain is a conditional glucose user. If there is glucose present, it will use glucose, okay? So what happens is, as a way to protect yourself from dying, essentially, uh, your brain can switch over to using ketones as fuel. So can your muscles, so can your liver, so can a lot of other organs, and the ketones are produced in the liver. So when you're low carbohydrate enough, um, you will start producing these ketones. I can go into the mechanisms of how it happens, but it's kind of not relevant for this discussion. Now these ketone bodies, they can be used in place of glucose in a lot of tissues, except red blood cells in your central nervous system. Those are two obligate glucose users. Now, one benefit, or one, one thing to keep in mind is a lot of people say, oh my god, well you need glucose. Yeah, you need about 100 grams of glucose a day. Your body can make about 120 grams of glucose a day with zero glucose intake. Uh, from They can make it from other gluconeogenic substrates like amino acids, uh, glycerol, off, uh, triacylglycerides, like a, a few different substrates. So you don't have to worry about that. So these ketone bodies can be used as an alternative fuel source, okay? Now they still can't replace glucose in terms of anaerobic metabolism, okay? So you still need glucose in the muscle for like high, like high intensity exercise, those sorts of things where you're having anaerobic metabolism. But for aerobic metabolism, ketone bodies can act as a replacement for glucose and obviously uh, as, uh, as brain fuel. Now, the traditional, what, what, in the bodybuilding community, what is thought of as a ketogenic diet is not a ketogenic diet. Uh, a ketogenic diet traditionally is very, very high fat, over 70% fat, uh, and moderate protein, like 20 to 25%, and like less than 5% carbohydrate, okay? Um, if, you're doing, if you're doing a very high protein diet, you are probably not gonna get into ketogenesis for most people because protein is gluconeogenic. So uh, when you see these guys who are eating like 300 grams of protein a day and they're saying, oh yeah, I'm on a ketogenic diet, you're not on a ketogenic diet, stop it. Um, now let's talk about the ketogenic diet and what are some benefits. So benefits are you switch to, you're burning more fats as fuel, you, get, uh, you do get some satiety benefits as now that you're burning fats, you're not kind of, your blood glucose is very stable, okay? So you're not gonna have hunger go up and down with, with blood glucose. Um, you have an alternative fuel source, something that spares blood glucose. Uh, ketones are also muscle sparing, okay? Now, keep in mind, glucose is also muscle sparing because glucose can, when you don't have glucose, you have to make glucose from protein, or in some cases from protein. So, ketones and carbohydrates are both muscle sparing. I would argue that probably carbohydrates are a little bit more muscle sparing, um, but both, both, you can spare muscle on both kinds of diets. Now. A lot of the purported claims out there about ketogenic diets is that they are superior for fat burning, okay? Um, and some of this work was by Jeff Volek, who I respect greatly. Um, but a lot of the studies done on comparing ketogenic diets versus non-ketogenic diets, um, they equated for calories but not protein. Well, so the ketogenic diet would have more protein than your standard diet. Same total calories. Well, the problem is, is the protein is thermogenic, okay? There was a study done by Arizona State in 2007, and uh, what they showed was when you equated calories and you equated protein, when you did a ketogenic diet versus a non-ketogenic high-protein diet where both were matched, there was no difference in fat loss. In fact, it was almost completely identical, okay? Um, 
So it doesn't appear that the ketogenic diets give you some kind of, that the low carb, high fat gives you some kind of metabolic advantage. Uh, it's the high protein or the higher protein compared to what say the food guide pyramid recommends. But for most of us in the bodybuilding community who are eating a lot of protein, you're not gonna get a metabolic advantage from, from, from uh, a ketogenic diet. That said, that doesn't mean it has def it doesn't mean it doesn't have defined benefits. Some people prefer a ketogenic diet because it's easier. You just cut out carbs, right? Like it's an easy way to diet. Um, you're you're pr you're making a caloric deficit by cutting out a food group. My concern is that typically it's not a sustainable diet. Um, most people they can't diet that way the rest of their lives, and they end up regaining a lot of that weight or all that weight. So. I tend to err more on the side of sustainability from the long-term perspective of I want to see people be on a diet that they can they can you know stay on uh, and, and maintain more of their fat loss. Now, some people have said also, well, there's all these health benefits to ketogenic diets, um, you know, insulin sensitivity, these sorts of things. If you look at a lot of those health benefits, if you control total calories they kind of go away. There's no difference when you're just complaining caloric restriction. Now, the caveat to that is there are some defined diseases that greatly benefit from a ketogenic diet. Cancer, Alzheimer's, epilepsy. Um, so epilepsy, uh, they find people who have seizures, when they put them on ketogenic diets, it greatly reduces the incidence of seizures. Again, this is not medical advice, okay? This is what the research has shown. I'm not telling you to do this if you have epilepsy or seizures. Maybe something you want to talk to your doctor about. But the research has shown that people who um, use a ketogenic diet tend to have lower incidence of seizures. In fact, they use it for Navy divers as well, okay? Alzheimer's. Uh, Alzheimer's is, we think, partly due to uh, gluco insulin resistance in the brain. So glucose is not getting into brain cells, and that's causing some of these problems. So by providing a different substrate that those brain cells can operate, operate off of, like ketones from a ketogenic diet, you can improve those symptoms. You can actually, and there's, there's quite a bit of data showing that people who, who have Alzheimer's or are in the developing phase of Alzheimer's, when you put them on a ketogenic diet, they do well. Um, and then cancer. So there's all different kinds of cancers out there, and I am not a cancer expert. My friend Dr. Dominic Diagostino uh, is, and he studies this stuff, and this is me kind of regurgitating what he's told me, um, and also from the research. Cancer, there's all different kinds of cancers, hundreds if not thousands of types of cancers. The one common thread they all have is they have dysfunctional mitochondria, and they are obligate glucose users, meaning cancer cells can only use glucose as fuel, okay? So that's called the Warburg hypothesis. So if you can reduce glucose and increase ketones, they can't, cancer cells cannot use ketones for fuel. If you increase ketones, you can actually slow the growth of tumors. Uh, and th this has been shown quite a bit. So you don't even, have, uh, you, this is something that is, I th I f if I found out I had cancer, today I'd be on a ketogenic diet. I would absolutely be on a ketogenic diet. So it looks like in instances where glucose metabolism is disrupted and you, providing some kind of alternative fuel source can give you a better outcome, that's when a ketogenic diet really shines. So, again, in the case of cancer, they, they've done a lot of studies. Where, I mean, in, in rodent models, they've essentially like, drastically slowed the growth of very aggressive tumors using a ketogenic diet. Um, so, again, not medical advice. This is not medical advice. And I recommend if you have cancer, talk to your oncologist about this and look at the research. So, but as far as fat loss goes, as far as overall health benefits um, and not like disease stuff, if you like eating a ketogenic diet, eat a ketogenic diet, but it doesn't seem to offer a metabolic advantage. But in certain specific circumstances, it does seem to be a much better outcome for these specific uh, disease states. So again, not medical advice, but something you may want to look into. And uh, I would also make sure that you are you know, talking with somebody who knows what they're talking about with regards to ketogenic dieting. Again, if somebody's telling you about high protein as a ketogenic diet, it's not, okay? In fact, traditional ketogenic diet, the very first ones were like 90% fat, okay? 
One other thing to keep in mind is there are um, ketone products on the market now. Um, some of them are even like pyramid scheme type stuff, so be careful of that. But there are um, exogenous ketones that you can take, and in particular I believe uh, Dr. D'Agostino works with a ketone ester, where they don't even reduce carbohydrate intake, they just give this, and it provides that alternative fuel substrate, and they're actually showing benefits from not, not reducing carbohydrate, but just giving this exogenous ketone. So I think that those are very interesting, and I think for like endurance athletes and performance athletes, uh, things, you know, again, with endurance, providing an alternative substrate can be really cool, and spare blood glucose, and maybe perform better. Um, and then for cancer, epilepsy, uh, Alzheimer's, those sorts of things, uh, any kind of brain dysfunction, uh, that those they may have uh, really cool outcomes, and we may see that those are actually therapeutic. Um, but be careful not to jump on the hype train too hard. Um, so overall, uh, with regards to ketogenic diets, yes, they absolutely have defined benefits, and I think in certain situations, very very helpful. But are they body compositionally superior to non-ketogenic, high-protein, calorie-equated diets? Not based on the research. All right, guys, if you like this sort of video, uh, make sure you check out my website at biolane.com. I have a members area where I do a webinar every month. Uh, I do Q&As every week. And we have new articles coming out every single week, um, video tutorials, all kinds of stuff. It's basically um, body composition education, okay? And it's 15 bucks a month, and for 15 bucks a month, you aren't gonna find anything else that's this high level that's related to uh, fitness and nutrition like you guys are interested in. So I recommend getting on over to biolane.com and checking it out, um, especially just for the webinars by themselves. You know, you get a 45 minute to an hour webinar with me every month for 15 bucks compared to what you'd pay in person for when I do these things. Plus you get all the other stuff on top of it. So get on over to biolane.com, check it out, and I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Thanks.